हरिनाम संकीर्तन की श्रीमद भगवत गीता की जगत गुरु श्रील ब्रह्मपाद की पिता गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे कृष्ण so uh, how many of you have been attending the bhagavad gita class so far okay got it very nice how many uh, chapters are there in the bhagavad gita 18 18 oh i thought this 21 no 18 only acha thank you and there are uh 3000 verses correct seven Oh, okay. I think I should. <laughs> I should cross check. Maybe I'm reading the wrong book. <laughs> so there are how many verses? Seven hundred verses. All right. So how many uh, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita? How many people are speaking overall? Four. Four. Who are they? Vikrashtra, Vikrashtra, Sanjaya, Arjuna, Krishna, and Krishna Bhagwan. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, okay. So this is a arrow, no? I have to go up and down here. Yeah. Huh. This is the arrow. Right. Mm -hmm. With with two fingers, you can do like this. Ah, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Two fingers. Ah. Got it. ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानांजन शलाकुर्मी येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम मुखम करोति वाचाल अंगुम लंघे तेग्री यहां वंदे श्रीगुरू दीनतारिण नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वे देंवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 ओके so let's start with uh, today's verse i believe that uh, all of you have completed till 25 is it yeah. okay all right <clears throat> who would like to read this verse anybody Yeah, the the Sanskrit one, then the English translation. Shushuran. Shushuran, Shurudas Chaiva, Deni Oruva Yorati, Tan Janicha Ta Kamsheya, Sarva Janu Namaskita. uh that's the uh, yeah that's the next one okay so who would like to read the english translation in the middle of the line of the whole party is the father teacher and the brother son and the son of the slave and also his father in law and grandson okay very nice thank you bro so uh, this is spoken by whom it is not arjuna it is not krishna is this krishna 
Sanjay, right? Okay, next one. So we will uh, recite the verses first and then I'll go back to explain it. Okay? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I will. I will. I will. Anyone would like to try? Now, Arjuna is going to speak. Okay. So, this is text 28. <clears throat> this is uh, Arjuna's, um, Arjuna is now speaking to Krishna and he is expressing himself. Anyone would like to try? Ah, that's that's uh, that's all. So now the translation. Very good. Okay, text twenty-nine. Okay, English translation. My whole trembling, my hair is standing on end, my bow. Can't be, can't be slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. Very nice. Now the thirtieth verse. Anyone? I am now unable to stand here and mingle against who hating myself and my mind is busy. I see only force of the meat protein. O Krishna, clear of the creation thereof in the mind. Okay. Jai. Very nice. So, we will uh, do till the 30th verse. But if we have time, we will also continue. Because I have in mind 35. But I don't know if I will be able to complete. But let's see. So, we will start off till uh, from here. Tatra Pashyat Sitan Parthaha. Sorry, again. So Tatra Pashyat Sita Sitan Parthaha. So here um, there is a description of what is going on in Arjuna's mind. Now everybody is ready for the battle. Now uh, uh, they are all looking at each other. You know, the Kaurava army is there, the Pandava's army is there, and they're all facing each other. And for a very, very, for years and years and years, they planned that um, for this particular day, including Arjuna, <clears throat> during his exile, the Pandavas were on exile for how many years? So, during that particular time, they were uh, heavily preparing for war. And Arjuna was one of the chieftains who was preparing. He was in deep meditation. He pleased Lord Shiva. And uh, Lord Shiva himself appeared. And there is a very nice pastime between Arjuna and Lord Shiva. But both of them fight. <clears throat> and Lord Shiva um, comes uh, in a different form. He doesn't, doesn't come as Lord Shiva. He comes as a, as a hunter. And then he fights with Arjuna. And he's very pleased with Arjuna's uh, you know, fighting skills. And then he blesses him. And that's when he gets the Pashupatastra. And then uh, Lord Shiva also tells him the secret of how to enter the Swargaloka, right? Because Swargaloka, you cannot go. The only way to go is when a person dies and they've also, you know, performed a lot of pious activities, then they will go to Swarga. So simply, to, like tomorrow, we cannot just go and come, no? like we go to Kaban Park or something. So Arjuna wanted to know, how can I do it? 
so lord shiva knows everything so lord shiva he tells him the secret of breaking this particular dimension and entering a different dimension and what is the trick to go to swargaloka so learning this particular art from lord shiva arjuna enters the swargaloka then he meets um, indra deva there he meets the other devatas also and then he he stays there for quite some time and he learns the art of using divyastras the heavenly um, nuclear weapons if you want to call it so then he learns that particular art then he comes here now he is completely prepared everybody is prepared bhima sena is prepared all of this has happened so you can imagine if there are if we have put years of effort in doing something and suddenly your key player in that company will say no i don't know i'm having my doubts should i do this should i i should i invest should i not invest you know if i do it then the competitors will feel bad you know competitors also are my uh, relatives only what will they feel you know all this is going on so uh, looking at this uh, this is the whole description in this uh, in the bhagavad gita of the dilemma that arjuna is going through there arjuna could see within the midst of the armies both parties his fathers grandfathers teachers maternal uncles brothers sons grandsons friends and also his fathers in law and well wishers okay so shri prabhupada is mentioning in the purport that they were teachers like there was also bhishma and somadatta these were very elderly people in fact mm, somadatta and bhishma i think are contemporaries somadatta's father is uh, bahlika in fact somad they you know often we think that bhishma deva was the eldest in the mahabharata there were also some people who were older than bhishma uh, also and that was the father of somadatta somadatta himself is an old man and older than him was maharaj bahlika okay and maharaj bahlika was the elder brother of shantanu who is shantanu bhishma's father which means that he is much older than bhishma also and this maharaja bahlika was there and even though he was such a elderly person he was an extremely powerful fighter even at that age and when he lifts his mace the uh, in his uh, gada yudh there was nobody who could fight him he was extremely powerful there were very few in the world who could who could defeat him and one of them was uh, bhima who was there on this side of the army so even though he was on such a elderly age he was there he is a very mysterious personality somadatta's father bahlika in um, our uh, south india we hear uh, how many of you have gone to this very holy kshetra called uh, mantralaya any of you have been to mantralaya before yeah. so mantralaya uh, the uh, yati in that place a very great personality is raghavendra tirtha right so this raghavendra tirtha in his previous life was maharaj bahlika okay so the same maharaj bahlika he takes birth as raghavendra tirtha okay this is the the if you speak to the madhvas they will tell you this so however this maharaj bahlika he was on the side of the kauravas he was not on the side of the pandavas because of his close relationship with bhishma okay so it's a very interesting fight that they also have because ultimately he engages in war with uh, bhima sena and nobody can defeat him and bhima sena so during the battle with bhima sena bhima sena was a little hesitant thinking that you know elderly person should i even engage in battle but uh, he was no ordinary fighter the uh, you know uh, bahlika but uh, bahlika hits bhima sena during the entire war he himself was counting that i have hit bhima sena about 700 times okay so he hits bhima sena in the war about 700 times and bhima sena also hits him uh, but bhima sena was a little soft you know while hitting him trying to be a little careful and uh, maharaj bahlika bahlika tells him that uh, don't be soft with me you know don't insult a kshatriya like this give me your best fight because that's what kshatriya that's a kshatriya spirit no those are not kshatriyas if someone comes to hit us slowly if you want to hit me little slowly only kshatriya will tell no hit me as hard as you can that's a real kshatriya spirit right so bahlika uh, was telling give me your best shot and then 
uh, towards the end, um, Maharaj Bahalika tells, I'm here actually because of Bhishma. And I know that the Kauravas are wrong. But in any case, I'm here. Um, and uh, I want, if I die, I want to die by your hands, by the holy hands of uh, Bhima, because Bhima also is a great devotee, great Vaishnava, right? So he says, if at all I have to die, let me die by your hands. So you please kill me. Just end me right now. I've lived for too long and I don't want to be, you know, see the death of so many people. So you might as well kill me in the beginning. So during this, one of the initial battles, uh, Bhima Sena, he kills Maharaj Bahalika. Now, um, Maharaj Bahalika, he comes later on, he incarnates as a, as an other yati called as Vyasa Tirtha. Okay. And then Vyasa Tirtha takes birth again as Raghavendra Tirtha. So that is how the parampara comes. Um, so this, um, in the Madhva parampara, their Mula Guru is Hanumanji and Bhima Sena. So this Vyasa Tirtha, he remembers that in my previous life as Bahalika, I have attacked Bhima Sena 700 times. So as an atonement to that, I am going to install 700 Hanuman temples. So primarily situated in the uh, Dakshina part of India, if you go to many other places, you will find uh, uh, Vyasa Tirtha has installed nearly 700 temples of Hanuman which is a very unique feature. If you go to these Hanuman, Hanuman temples, most of the, uh, in fact, all the Hanuman temples, how do you recognize if Vyasa Tirtha has installed them, is that Hanumanji is facing a certain direction, but his, his tail comes up over his head and there is a bell on the tail. So that's how you recognize it. There is one here at um, Mysore Road, uh, the beginning of Mysore Road, Gali Anjaneya, okay, in Bangalore. That is installed by Vyasa Tirtha. That's one of the 700. Uh, Kengal Hanuman on Mysore Road. And there is a Kengal Hanuman that is also installed by Vyasa Tirtha. Like that, there are many, 700 by Vyasa Tirtha. Uh, someday, uh, if somebody is adventurous to go to see all the temples, you can go and you know, visit all the 700 temples and identify where those temples are. <clears throat> so, uh, this is Maharaj Bahalika, his son Somadatta, and they were all uh, very, uh, very powerful, very, very powerful warriors. So, Bhishma, Somadatta, Somadatta had was very, um, there was a, there was another warrior on the side of the Kauravas called Satyaki. So he was, there were great enemies. Satyaki is a disciple of Arjuna. Okay, he was, uh, he was, he really liked Krishna and Arjuna very much. And he asked Arjuna to train him in battle. And Arjuna taught him very well. And if you're a student of Arjuna, then, you know, you have to be a Maharati. So he was a very, very powerful warrior himself. So, uh, Somadatta and his son, uh, they were all uh, Bhurishrava. Uh, were, they were all uh, enemies of Satyaki and they joined that army. Even though they knew that uh, the Kauravas were wrong, still they joined the army of the Kauravas for individual enmities with people. Oh, my enemy is in that army. So, I'll join the wrong army just so that I can attack that one person. You know, they joined. So, sometimes um, more than, um, uh, even in modern politics it happens, um, even though we know a certain uh, party may be, you know, adharmic, but because of personal reasons, we may just follow it. You know, we may join that particular political party or something like that. So, politics is very old and this has been going on for a very long time. When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. So, this was one of the first reasons of why Arjuna uh, told Krishna that he does not want to engage in war. He, he said, I don't want to fight. Sometimes people misunderstand the Bhagavad Gita. I remember many years ago, maybe about 20 years ago or something, I was distributing Bhagavad Gita in the trains, you know. Um, I was a young brahmachari at that time, so I used to distribute in the trains. And in the trains at that time, one person was was telling me, why are you distributing this book which is filled with hate and war? You know, so I, I was I was startled. I said, what do you mean hate and war? He said, here, you know, the this uh, prince Arjuna is telling he doesn't want to engage in war. And Krishna, by the end of Bhagavad Gita, has convinced him to fight in war. You know, he wants peace, but Krishna is encouraging war. So what kind of a book is this? 
right? So this is a misunderstanding that many people really have because we have very weak understanding of what is dharma. Okay, we're still living in an you know, maybe influenced by uh, some political leaders who say that if uh, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, you should show the other cheek. You've heard that, right? Sometimes they say something like that. Is that possible in this world? What do you think will happen? If someone slaps on one cheek, slow the other cheek, they'll give you on the other cheek also. And then they'll punch it between also, right? So uh, we will only keep getting slaps our entire life, which is completely okay, personally. But it may not be okay if you're representing dharma. And this was taught by Acharya Hanumanji in the Ramayana. He was being insulted again and again and again by Ravana. And he was completely okay with that. The moment he spoke about Sri Ram, the whole of Lanka was burned. The moment he insulted Sri Ram. That is how anger should be taught. And this is why Krishna installed Hanumanji on top. You would have heard about this in the previous classes. No? Installed Hanumanji right on top. Because he said that each one of us, we have to follow the previous Acharya. So he's telling Arjuna, don't be part of this weakness. Don't remove this mental weakness and follow our previous Acharya. The previous Acharya is sitting right there. And that is why Hanumanji was installed. So uh, Hanumanji himself was so powerful, he could have finished the whole battle in, uh, in a fraction if he wanted. But uh, it was not his battle at that time. So he was there to inspire. So just like that, our previous Acharyas are also there. It can be Sripad Ramanuja Acharya, Sripad Matva Acharya, uh, Srila Prabhupada, and so many other Acharyas are there. Uh, sometimes we may also wonder that Krishna said he is going to appear again and again, you know, famous dialogues. Then where is he? So much Adharma is going on. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, uh, they will sit and watch, just like Hanumanji was sitting and watching. Because it is our time to fight. It is our time to to uh, protect dharma just like dharma is protecting us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's our duty and that's how it functions. We cannot be in this helpless condition thinking that somebody else has to come and do it for us. Isn't it? So, <clears throat> so here Arjuna is explaining. Oh, did I miss one verse in between? Okay, yeah. No, no, I so my whole body is trembling my hair standing on end and bow Gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning so in modern terminology these are all called psychosomatic uh, you know conditions right so when your mind is going through something you will see symptoms of that in the body also so when you're too anxious and all that, you will see symptoms of that in the body. So it can be, uh, you know, hair standing on the end. It happens to us also sometimes when you're too excited, too scared, something you'll see that uh, the hair on the end stands. So this was going on to uh, in our uh, Arjuna's body also, that he was trembling and his Gandiva slipped from his hand. Now this is not an ordinary situation that Arjuna's Gandiva falls from his hand because Arjuna's Gandiva, Gandiva is a very, very powerful bow and this Gandiva was previously used by uh, uh, Lord Shiva. It was used by Lord Vishnu also, right? It's a very, very powerful weapon which later came to uh, Agni and, uh, you know, uh, Varuna and all of that. So many Devatas have used it. It's a very powerful weapon and Arjuna had great reverence towards Gandiva. In fact, there was, a, there was once Arjuna had said that if anyone tells him to give up his Gandiva, he will immediately kill that person. You know, because he found, uh, he and his Gandiva were one. It was like that, you know. So it was a pride of a Kshatriya. We should not make statements like that because we are not, we don't have the Kshatriya spirit. If somebody tells me to get down from my car, I will kill him or something. No, we don't have that. <laughs> so we shouldn't imitate these things. <laughs> so Arjuna, for Arjuna, it's a very important thing. You know, this is a Kshatriya spirit. And they functioned in that particular way, correct? So, um, in fact, in one situation, his own brother, Yudhishthir Maharaj, tells him to give up his bow, right? He tells him, you throw away your bow. In some anger, he tells him. So, he goes to kill his brother also and Krishna stops him at that time. So, uh, this happens among Kshatriyas. These things happen. Uh, it's a Kshatriya spirit. So, more we understand Mahabharata, we will understand how Kshatriya spirit works. The Brahmana, Brahmana mood is different. They function differently. Kshatriyas function differently. 
uh, the vaishyas or you know businessmen function differently so you talk to a businessman any situation they will know how to convert that into currency you know they will put them into any situation they'll say ah this is a good situation we know how to make business out of this right so you go to their communities no? certain communities are there very strong business communities so you see the gujaratis or you see the marwadi communities and all the very hardcore business you give them anything put them in any situation they will make money out of that situation right because intrinsically it's there it's part of their dna it's like that uh, similarly kshatriyas are also there any situation kshatriya is not a bully kshatriya is not a person who attacks someone without any reason kshatriya means protector kshatriya is always protect. the moment they a kshatriya sees someone who is weak who is helpless immediately they will go to hell they will not think so much about consequences they will not think about their own death nothing they say that person is in trouble dharma is in trouble i am going to i will help that person so kshatriya is never a bully and this is why when parashara he killed many kshatriyas around the world because many of those kshatriyas had become bullies they had their strength they were misusing their strength and they had become bullies so um, parashuram had to eliminate them but then uh, this is the kshatriya spirit now so if gandiva is slipping from his hand we can understand what a mental condition arjuna was in after preparing for battle for such a long time he is saying that i don't know i'm feeling weak my my gandiva is slipping from my hand my hands are shaking shivering i don't know what to do what am i supposed to do i am now unable to stand here any longer i am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling i see only causes of misfortune o oh krishna killer of the keshi demon okay so uh, krishna's name is keshava okay there are different names uh, different meanings of the name keshava one of the meaning is that he killed the keshi uh, demon so because he killed this rakshasa called keshi that is why he is called keshava another reason why he is called keshava is because he has got very beautiful hair kesh right so he has got very beautiful hair that's why also that's another reason why he is called keshava so there's a if we read our shrimad bhagavatam there's so such beautiful description of why krishna's hair is description of krishna's hair only it was so beautiful so wonderful and when he is walking along with the cows because the cows are walking so fast this dust raises and in his beautiful curls there is little bit of dust uh, of raja and that beautiful and through the sunlight even the sun looks beautiful when you see through krishna's hair okay it's not that the sun is uh, uh, his hair looks beautiful because of the sun the sun looks beautiful because of krishna sir so that is why he is called as keshava but here in this particular situation uh, the context it is krishna is called as the killer of keshi um because why is arjuna saying this because um he is a killer of demons and arjuna's mind is filled with doubts and despondency in this particular situation so he is referring to krishna as the killer of keshi and he is telling him that o oh, keshava you please help me that the doubts in my mind are also demons so you please kill this demon within me this despondency within me so arjuna is internally very aware that his own weakness is not is not good somewhere but he wants to clarify he wants to ask krishna these questions and clear and get clarification that what am i really supposed to do this is very important so let's move to the next verse nacha shreyo na pashyami khatva swajanam ahave na kankshe vijayam krishna na cha rajyam sukhani cha i do not see how any good can come from the city my own in friend to this battle no can i my dear krishna dear and subsequent victory in the battle very good thank you prabhu so i do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen nacha shreyo nu pashyami tatva swajanam ahave so uh, what shreya is there when i kill my own swajana okay so this is another reason that arjuna is uh, arjuna is explaining that uh, what is the point of me um, what is the point of me uh, engaging in battle with my own swajana now mahabharata explains that there are 
we can have different kinds of allies okay different kinds of um, we can team up with different kinds of people who are our friends swajana different categories so um, there are different names one is called as someone who is sa artha okay who have the same cause if you and me have the same cause that is one kind of friendship okay the other one is called as bhajamana which means that um, if i remember the terminology is exactly which means that our own family members you know it can be your cousins etc etc that is one kind of a unity so sometimes we we can um, associate with strangers and we meet them and we say that hey can we collaborate because we have a common cause so we do that in terms of business etc no we have a common cause you want this i want this let's work together so it's a new person we find an association we have a common cause and then we meet that is one the other one is that when we are with relatives okay cousins is that my own brother etc or sister etc so uh, that is another and um, so uh, there are a list of these different kinds of um, associations that are mentioned of these bhishma in the mahabharata he explains that the best one is your own family okay is your own family your own brother or cousin or someone like that of course the equations may have changed today in 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 uh, you know in kaliyuga we just don't know how things are you know we hear so many things for the name of property this that you know sometimes own brothers they may attack each other and all that but in any case generally speaking uh, if we remove all the extreme cases generally speaking this is supposed to be the uh, closest of alliances right for others bhishma deva recommends that you should be able to test them before you actually uh, you know form a relationship with them okay it can also be a king and the citizens and king he gives separate instructions that the king has to be very careful with everybody king cannot uh, be slack with their own relatives also because they you know even rel relatives can sometimes form mutiny and kill them so in this particular context arjuna is asking they are all my swajana they are supposed to be the closest with me how can i kill them and look at all of them they are they're just standing there with so much of enthusiasm Thirty-two to thirty-five. Wow! You have to be a Maharathi to finish all of these. So let's see. Okay. Kim no raje na go vinda kim bo gair jivite na va yesha marthe kangshitam no rajam boga sukani cha ta ime ta ime vastita yudhe pranam stetva da dhanani cha acharya pitara putras. महीकृति निहत्य धारधरा Yeah. So initially, Arjuna was 
explain to Krishna that he cannot fight because of this dilemma. You know, uh, should I even fight them? Uh, they are my. But here now again, Arjuna is explaining his second reason that uh, what is the point? You know, I don't even want this kingdom. And if this kingdom, even if I win this kingdom after killing all my relatives, then what is the point of you know of enjoying this kingdom without my relatives, without my own brother-in-law, father-in-laws, because they're all standing on the other side of the army. What is the point? Now this is a very uh, so if you closely observe, we can see that Arjuna is having a very material understanding. Arjuna is not really thinking right now in terms of dharma. He is still thinking that if I win this, we often think, no, I may build a very big house, big bungalow, but if I have to live alone in this bungalow, what is the point? I'd rather live in a small house with my entire family. And this, you know, children are talking and grandfathers, grandmothers, they're all there. And we all like that also. That's a very normal thing. And Arjuna is speaking like that. So Krishna is closely observing him, uh, trying to observe his state of mind. And Arjuna is explaining his state of mind. And Arjuna, uh, Arjuna is also thinking that, Krishna, please try and understand what I'm going through. That is why he's referring to Krishna as Govinda. Because Govinda means the one who is the controller of the senses. He is the controller of the senses. So you are the controller of my senses. You understand my mind. So you please understand me. So it, there is a very deep meaning. Arjuna is not an ordinary person like us. So every time he is referring to Krishna with a certain name, there is a very deep meaning of why he is referring to Krishna in that particular name. So he's referring to Krishna as Govinda here because he's a controller of senses. He's telling you, please understand my mind. You, you are the controller of the mind. So why don't you understand my mind, Govinda, that I'm going through this. So Govinda, what avail to us is this kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all those who we may desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield. Oh Madhusudana, he's telling. Oh Madhusudana. When teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law. So if you look at the Sanskrit verses, he's referring to Krishna as Madhusudana, the killer of demons. So um, killer of the Madhu demon. So why is he calling him the killer of Madhu demon? Because you're the killer of demons. You're not the killer of your own relatives. Mm -hmm. So I should be killing demons. Why are you putting me in a situation where I have to kill my own uh, relatives. So you are Madhusudana. You are the killer of demons. You are not the killer of relatives. So why are you calling me the killer of, of relatives? Right? There is a deeper meaning. It will come up in the later verses sometime when some other devotee talks about it. Um, so here you can see uh, all these words are used. Matulaha, Shvashuraha. Shvashura like Sasura, Hindi. Uh, so Sasura comes from this particular word. Okay. Shwashuraha. And let's see. What do you uh, call your uh, brother-in-law in Hindi? What is brother-in-law? Uh, Sala bolte hai. So, Shalaha. Right? So, you can see that that's why Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. So, if you really go back, you will see that uh, all languages for that matter. You take Tamil, you take Telugu, you take Kannada, you take uh, Marathi. Uh, some languages are more closer. Some languages are very a little more distant because of various reasons. Like uh, the modern Hindi that is spoken is has a lot of mix of um, influence of Urdu because of invasion and you know so many other reasons. There's a lot of invasion, uh, a lot of uh, mixture of Urdu. That's why the original Hindi is kind of you know kind of mixed up uh, today. So many words are there. In fact, the common words that you normally hear that is spoken in Hindi, many of them are not really Hindi. That's a mixture of, of Urdu. But if you go back to the original Hindi, you'll see it is very similar to Sanskrit. If you, uh, if you really study Malayalam, you will see so many words are there which has so much of similarity with, uh, with Sanskrit. If you go to Marathi, Marathi is another language which has a lot of similarity in Sanskrit. Kannada, there's a lot of similarity with Sanskrit, like that. So this is how certain words you take, we will find that, oh yeah, right. You know, that word, you also say that, we also say that, we have a similarity in that particular word because the mother is the same, right? It's like that. So, Matulaha, uh, Shwashuraha, Pautraha. So, in this way, he's saying that all of them are standing there. What am I supposed to do? But Arjuna has because of this dilemma that he is going through, the state of mind that he is going through, he has completely forgotten the past. He has forgotten everything that the Kauravas have done in the past. Right? It's very important that he remembers it. 
that uh, the kind of adharma that they have they have performed um, it can be his own relatives etc now one of the greatest ones who are standing there of course a very great personality um, see mahabharata we have to understand it situationally also understand it in its past etc many details are there uh, for example uh, bhishma uh, who's bhishma's father again maharaj shantanu right so shantanu just to give you a little bit you know there are a lot of details are there just to give you a little bit of the past of how shantanu came shantanu was a great king in his previous life called mahasena okay he is known by different names one of his names is mahasena and mahasena he had performed so many pious activities that he had gone to swargaloka and there in swargaloka there was a great yagya being performed the yagya was so great that even lord brahma himself had appeared and uh, many of them were sitting there and it was a very pious uh, time many devatas were there and mahasena the king who was on earth he had an opportunity to go to swarga to attend that it's not possible for ordinary human beings to go to swarga but he was allowed to go there he was sitting there along with lord brahma and so many other devatas respectable people were there so at that time there were also apsaras there were many of them were there but everybody was sitting very respectfully and just then uh, the mother of the universe um, one of the mothers that is ganga devi herself who is respected not just here she is respected in all other planets so ganga devi herself appeared so it so happened that during the yagya there was a gust of wind you know wind blew and uh, ganga devi's clothes kind of you know what she was wearing kind of moved away you know so she was a little embarrassed and she was trying to hold herself and what would any gentleman do in a situation like that if a woman is in a you know embarrassing situation like that immediately they would they would not look they would not stare they would put their head down so all the devatas immediately uh, they put their head uh, head down except for mahasena this particular king and he was staring because you know he was just drawn to her beauty and he was just staring and he just couldn't give up looking and uh, lord brahma observed this and he said you've done lot of pious activities but you have no place here you know in swarga loka we don't do this you know this is not the kind of behavior that we do because we understand the difference between let's say an apsara or someone who is like consent you know apsaras they they dance and all of that out of consent but we understand who is a mother who is somebody else's wife we understand these uh, these boundaries so you don't belong here so i will not cast you down to the lower planets but i will have to send you back to earth you know you go down there again uh, you don't belong here Uh, once you prove yourself i'll call you back so that mahasena was born as shantanu okay so he was, he was born as the son of pradipa pradipa was in the in the line of uh, uh, maharaj guru so pradipa son became shantanu and uh, ganga devi after this particular episode she was leaving that arena and she was going back and she was you know mentally uh, she was a little embarrassed that why did this person look at me in that particular way uh, just then she saw there were eight young boys who were sitting there and crying these were the vasus so these were called as the ashta vasus the eight brothers eight vasus so they were very sad and they were they were very depressed so ganga devi and they approached the moment they saw ganga devi they paid obeisances and just like children to a mother they they asked her can you help us in some way we don't know what to do she said they yeah, tell me what happened Uh, they said that you know sage vashishta vashishta muni has a cow called the surubi cow you know which is a very powerful cow that can fulfill all desires so uh, we wanted to go and steal that particular cow and vashishta and one of the brothers was the one who actually pulled it so vashishta cursed all of us that this is not Uh, this is not you are all children of the devatas and this is not how you are supposed to behave so it cursed you to be born on earth so all eight of them now they were very scared to go to earth this is a very nice place come to earth and sin is very natural here people very naturally feel like doing things that is wrong so i don't want to go there if we all go there then we will end up doing more uh, sinful activities then we will continue to be there um, in this in this earth so we or we may go even lower so we don't want to go there what can we do can you please help us Uh, vashishta said he cannot take back that curse so is there something that you can do and um, she said okay let me think about it and then she said that uh, i want all of you to take birth now you will take birth as the 
sons of Shantanu. Okay, who's this Mahasena king? Mahasena is going to take birth as Shantanu. So all of you Vasus, you will take birth as his sons and my sons also. Okay, so I will also appear there. And you will be born as the son of Shantanu and me. And I will immediately relieve you from that from that birth, of the, from that human birth, and you will go back. Your curse will be over. This is why when Ganga Devi came there, she got married to Shantanu, and she was taking each baby that was born, every time it was born, she was taking and putting the baby into Ganga. Right? So uh, she had, all of you know this, so she had told that, uh, uh, do not question me, told Shantanu, the day you question me, I'm going to go away from here. Shantanu said, I'm not question, but, uh, you know, when every time he was seeing this happening, he couldn't tolerate it. So the last one, the eighth child, when she was going to put him in Ganga, uh, put that child in Ganga, that's when Shantanu questioned. Ganga Devi said, okay, I will leave this child with you, but I'm going to go away. And then she went away at that particular point. And this child became Bhishma. Right. So there's another name for Bhishma. Yeah, Devavrata. Right. So the, he has also multiple names. And one of his names is Devavrata because he took a great pledge. His name is also Bhishma because he took a very Bhayankara Bhishma um, Vrata, right? Uh, Pratigya. So in this particular way, Bhishma, it is also his curse that he had to remain a Brahmachari his entire life. That was part of his curse that he can never really get along with, a, you know, have that kind of a relationship with a woman. So he's going to be deprived of that and he's going to live a very, very long life. Uh, as a son, because he was that one who pulled the Surabi cow. Amongst the eight brothers, they all gave, they were all motivational speakers. They told, you do it, you do it, but there's only, always that one naughty boy. You know? That one naughty boy who pulled the cow, he was the one who became Bhishma later on. So he was, because the others had an opportunity to go past, but Bhishma had to stay for a long time. The power of a curse of, of a great Muni like Vashishtha. Right? So in this way, Bhishma continued, but Bhishma is a great personality. Nonetheless, there were certain drawbacks which are also pastimes. We'll understand this. We should not misunderstand Bhishma, but there were certain things that he did was he always followed dharma. Uh, in the following verses, in fact, the next few verses, when next week when you come, you will see that um, the difference between different kinds of... See, in Vedic literatures, there are gradations. If you don't follow a guru, if you're just randomly today, because we have the internet, all the Vedas, Puranas, everything is there on the internet. Anybody can read it. And they can claim to be very great uh, scholars. But uh, the Puranas themselves say that the person who reads the Purana without the guidance of a guru will go to hell. What is the meaning of that? Why go to hell? Because we will end up misunderstanding everything. You, you see, uh, when uh, uh, the Brahmanas, they worship Shaligram Shila. All of us have heard of Shaligram Shila. So the Shaligram Shila is kept in a silver box. And the silver box is nicely decorated. Many times we observe the silver box and we think, oh, the silver box is so beautiful and we're just drawn by the beauty of the silver box so much that we don't even open it and look at the Shaligram Shila inside. Puranas are like that. When you look at it externally, they seem very attractive. Are I am understanding everything. Very nice stories are going on and you know now I have, I have become a great pundit. But actually it is a guru who will open that silver box and say, don't get carried away by all the shiny things around this. Open that box and look at the hidden meaning inside because Krishna is there inside. The real tattva, Shaligram Shila is there inside the box. Why are you just you know looking at the external box and getting drawn by that? So that is the understanding. So all the Puranas also should be understood. In fact, the Bhagavad Gita also should be understood under the guidance of the spiritual master like all of us are doing. That is why we have a translation and then we have a purport. Purport is the explanation given by the Acharyas. Right? So there are many bhashyas. Srila Prabhupada's commentary is there. Um, there is Gita bhashya. Uh, like Sripad Ramanuj Acharya has given his own bhashya. Uh, Sripad Madhvacharya has given his own bhashya. Balade Vidya Bhushan has given his own bhashya. Like that. There are many bhashyas by Acharya. So when we look at these bhashyas, then we understand that, okay, this is what... Uh, this is how we are supposed to understand. And Krishna will elaborate on why we need to accept a guru as we proceed. Uh, so when you understand the Mahabharata also, you look at Bhishma Deva, there are certain situations. Someone may ask, why was Bhishma punished in such a severe way that there were arrows throughout his body? The Acharya has explained 
that Krishna allowed it. Krishna allowed such a punishment to Bhishma because of one of his most grievous mistakes. And this was during the disrobing of Draupadi. During that particular situation, he was sitting silent. He was there in that particular place. And he's such a powerful warrior. He single-handedly could have finished that entire episode and stopped all the Kauravas from this nonsense. But he did not. And when he was questioned later, he said, according to dharmic principles, I am subordinate to the king. And whatever the king says, I am supposed to do that. And that is my dharma. So there are, that's why I said Vedic literatures have different gradations of dharmas. Okay, like there are uh, principles for a Kshatriya, principles for a Brahmana, and there are Dharma Shastras, which are, which are greater than that, greater than that. Then there are Bhagavata Dharmas, which are even greater than that. So we need to understand, so whenever there is a dilemma on what is right, what is wrong, what am I supposed to do, what am I not supposed to do, we have to see which is the greater good. There is good and there is a greater good. Just like children, do we tell children that it is okay to lie sometimes? Or do we tell them, no, you should always tell the truth? When they are small, you have to tell them, always tell the truth. But once they grow up a little bit, they gain some little bit of maturity, we tell them that sometimes it's okay to lie for a greater good. Isn't it? So we tell them to tell a lie. So that is the greater good. So every time in dharma also, we need to understand there is good, there is greater good. And this is what we don't understand that there are self-proclaimed uh, pundits of Mahabharata today who will not follow anything, but would say, but Krishna did that wrong, no? You know, he did adharma in that, why he cheated? Uh, you know, Duryodhan was going, he had, had a full metal body, why he told him to cover himself and, you know, gave a... There is good, there is a greater good. For the sake of dharma, sometimes you'll have to do certain things. And uh, this is what, if you look at Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra was, was very direct, very straight. That was a different time. When Krishna came, he said, you cannot follow that. If all of us are going to be like Sri Ram, it's going to be very difficult. So there are certain times when you will have to um, you know, understand the greater good and do what is, what is right. You may have to cheat certain times. You may have to do certain things. But your focus should always be on dharma. If anything is dharmic, you will have to do it. So these are finer details that... Uh, the Dharma Shastras explain and so on. So, uh, Bhishma Deva, hence Bhishma Deva was punished in such a uh, gruesome way. Um, and Bhishma Deva, many times, there are many pastimes of Bhishma Deva in that way. Another uh, personality would be, say, Karna. If you look at Karna, he is also in the modern world celebrated a lot. And many people are confused about Karna is a good person, bad person. Many of them, the Karna fans are there. Particularly, I, I, uh, I don't have a television at home, but uh, some devotee friends used to send clips on WhatsApp of, uh, oh, I'm very confused with this and that. And there was one particular serial called Suryaputra Karna, right? That used to come on, I think, Sony TV or something, I remember. So I used to say that uh, this is not the real Karna that they show in that serial. I used to call him Sony Putra Karna because... That was created by Sony. It was not the original Mahabharata. Right? So the original Mahabharata, Surya Putra Karna was very different. His character was very different. And um, uh, he is celebrated. Of course, he has certain qualities. Does he have qualities of, uh, of being, of giving charity and all that? Certainly. Wonderful qualities. And we must appreciate it. But then there are some other qualities that he has displayed. Uh, in fact, if you look at Duryodhana, Duryodhana had many bad plans and all of that was there. But the encouragement behind all of whatever he was doing was done by Karna. Karna would often encourage him. Hey, why, why do you have to listen to him? Do it. It's okay. There are many instances like that in Mahabharata. Just like say, he was disrespectful to his own guru also. Uh, who was the guru of um, Karna? Parashuram. Before Parashuram, he was the disciple of Dronacharya. Okay, so he was the disciple of Dronacharya. And he was, he learned a lot of things from Dronacharya, but at some point, uh, he was very competitive looking at Arjuna. He wanted to defeat Arjuna at all points. And Arjuna was at least about 10, 12 years younger than, uh, than Karna. Karna was very, uh, you know, much older than him. He was older than Yudhishthira also. So, 
so he was he was looking at him and if, if, you know dronacharya was telling that i want all of you to learn why have this unhealthy competition good healthy competition is good you know it will help us grow but he was always uh, his focus was whatever you teach him i want to know one one thing better i want to know better. i want to defeat him defeat him and he was a, arjuna was a small boy and he was so dronacharya did not like his attitude at all and later on he once asked uh, dronacharya you teach me uh, how to use the brahmastra brahmastra was a very very powerful weapon and you see so brahmastra not just it's it's not a skill you also need to have the right attitude the attitude of a kshatriya the attitude of protecting why is it that all of us don't have the button to a nuclear bomb imagine if we all had it we would have watched the news some day are this pakistan what are they doing you know press one button boom right because we don't know the final details of what is going on right political details so we have to leave it to the diplomats and some very big people are there who understand final details of politics leave it to them i give it to aam janta we will all can i think the world would have not existed right every country will be <laughs> blasting each other so nuclear weapons like that also has to be given according to the attitude and the expertise so dronacharya said no, i'm not going to teach this to you in fact it's not that dronacharya is perfect in every way uh he has also made some mistakes through his emotions like he taught uh, ashwatthama because it's his own son he taught him uh, how to invoke the brahmastra but halfway he stopped he said i, I told you how you can release it but i'll not tell you how you can bring it back so a missile when you should be able to launch it um, you should be able to withdraw it also that was not taught to ashwatthama so he said i have not taught you the entire thing so you don't use it also so ashwatthama said okay i'll not use it Uh, but in the end he used it uh, so karuna when he got uh, very upset with rona chari why are you teaching me he said i can't teach you this so he became disrespectful he said i'm not going to be here anymore and he left his gurukul uh, drona chari university he left it where is this drona chari's university in modern india anybody knows dehradun yeah dehradun that entire belt close to delhi right all of that area was all his university okay in the outskirts of delhi so all these areas uh, in fact um uh, gurugram right so you look at gurugram guru the gram that entire belt all of that was his university so his entire university was such a large university uh you know you could compare it i don't know you know the ancient days harvard or stanford or something like that so it was not easy to just enter you know dronacharya's gurukul like that because it was a very elite club you know uh, because he was a teacher of that stature also he himself was a disciple of parashara so in this particular situation he goes to uh, parashara uh, karna he goes to parashara i will not learn from you i will go to your guru but parashuram will not teach kshatriyas he has a problem with kshatriyas so he he teaches only brahmanas so then uh, karna went and told lied to him that uh, i am a brahmana so uh, you know uh, his whole details aadhar card he changed everything and he said i am a brahmana so you please train me so he trained him and later on he got caught right so then he gets a curse also from parashara so uh, this was karna but um, in fact the whole episode of draupadi duryodhana did not even have that idea of the disrobing of draupadi you know the vastra harana duryodhan even didn't think of it also he said yeah these guys are here and we'll insult the pandavas and he was very happy with that uh, it was karna who told him uh, gave the idea of, um, when yudhishthir maharaj said everything is gone he said your wife is there um, and then he told duryodhan also why don't you call her call her disrobe her. you know and uh, so duryodhan he he was like oh yeah i never thought of that so duryodhan was getting ideas from him okay but television serials will not show that but that's why it is very important that we study mahabharata vyasadev's mahabharata and understand from there so that uh, because serials show him as some you know deprived child from his you know all unfair things have happened nothing like that um, there is one statement popular statement that comes i've seen the old mahabharata when i was a child um, that draupadi says sut putra you know they Uh, use that particular word suta putra as it is as if it's a negative term suta one of our acharyas who has spoken the shrimad bhagavatam is also called as called as suta goswami okay now suta 
is the child of a Kshatriya father and a Brahmana mother. Okay, Kshatriya father, Brahmana mother. So, uh, if that kind of a union happens, uh, then that child is called a Sudhamudra. Okay, uh, usually it, it can be the other way around. Brahmana father, Kshatriya mother. That is how it's supposed to be. The uh, husband has to be a Brahmana, wife can be a Kshatriya. So, if it's a little bit older, which is not problematic, but it happens in relationships sometimes. So, if the father is a uh, Kshatriya and the mother is a Brahmana, then the child is called as Sutaputra. But it's not considered in any way low caste or something like that. Uh, so, there are many Acharyas in that particular way. Many personalities are there who are uh, Suta. Mm, have you heard of... Um, what is that uh, person's name in Virata? Uh, who Bhima Sena kills in Virata? That... Kichaka, Kichaka, right? So Kichaka was killed. Kichaka was also Suta, uh, Suta Putra, right? So he was, he could be killed only by three uh, people um, Lord Balram, Bhima Sena, and I think one more person, something like that, because his physical prowess was like that. So, um, this, uh, he was, so there are many Sutaputra. So in the television, they show as if it's some low class, you know, you know uh, caste system and all that we bring. It's nothing like that. Um, they show that how Draupadi rejects Karna. Now, why did Draupadi reject Karna in the Swayamvara when they have? So, yeah, so you see, she was open to the idea that it's a fair competition. Okay, in her heart, she wanted to marry Arjuna. But it was a fair competition and her father made that competition that who can lift the bow and, you know, that was a competition, the eye of the fish, you know, that is rotating and all that. And uh, others tried, nobody could even lift that bow, uh, bow, including Duryodhana. And Karna was there and Karna was able to do it. But Karna's point at that time was that I will not marry you because, you know, um, Duryodhana really liked uh, Draupadi. He wanted to get married to Draupadi. So, he can't get married to someone that his friend likes. Right? Uh, so, that's against the friend code or whatever. So, he didn't want to spoil his relationship in that particular way. So, he said that Duryodhana, don't worry, I'll do it for you. So, uh, Duryodhana was very happy. So, he, he went, he said, I'm going to do this, but I'm doing it on, on behalf of my friend Duryodhana. And this uh, Draupadi had a problem with. She said that, what is this? Uh, you have to do it if you want to do it. Don't do it. There's no proxy here, right? If he's not capable, then that's that's the end of it. And uh, but you know sometimes they show that it's because of his caste, no, no, all bakwas, all nonsense. Uh, so it's very important that we approach Mahabharat very correctly. Uh, so all these popular statements that they make, you know, um, Andeka beta anda, all this nothing like that happened in Mahabharat. Okay, these are all grand illusions that TV serials have created. Uh, why are they doing it so confidently? They're doing it so confidently. Like uh, day before yesterday, somebody told me, and I was on the phone, that person told me, uh, but Krishna asked many favors from um, Karna and asked Karna's blessings. I said, where, where did you read it? Prabhuji, it's there in Bhagavad Gita. I, so I'm, <laughs> I said, where, what is Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> I said, you know, Bhagavad Gita, you don't have stories in Bhagavad Gita. Eh? This is uh, Krishna and Arjuna's conversation. What did you read in Bhagavad Gita? You know where people get so much confidence of TV serials and all that? Because they are very confident that none of us have read it, read it. They know that in Sanatana Dharma, the Hindus, we don't read our scriptures. That is where their confidence comes from. We will show whatever we want to. Uh, we can say whatever we want to. Even Bhagavad Gita, WhatsApp quotes, you will get Krishna told Arjuna. And everybody, wow, Krishna told Arjuna and WhatsApp. Because nobody has read. So you can say whatever you want. Right? When I see these quotes, I just wonder, hey, you know, what is going on? So it's very important that before we blame, many times in our, uh, you know, Sanatana Dharma, we blame other religions and all that. This religion, that, that, that religion, they are against Hinduism. We are the problem. If we are strong, then nothing will happen. Uh, you know, you can take any other religion. It can be this religion, that religion. They're all reading their scriptures. Whatever their scriptures are, they're reading it. They understand it very well. Our, our people, we don't. You know, uh, a very small number. Of course, now the number is increasing. More people are a little more interested. And that's a very good thing. But uh, it has to happen much more. It has to happen much more. So uh, we would request all of you to also encourage others to come for these classes. If you have neighbors and others, and encourage them. 
to come and listen a little bit at least. And when they understand, what happens is when we understand our own history, our foundation becomes very strong, right? Otherwise, we'll always be weak. We will have numbers, but we'll be weak, you know, like the uh, what's going on in uh, Tirupati, Laddu, that new news is there. You think any other community, if something like this had happened, they would have, uh, you know, just been okay with it, you know? And we are just okay with it somehow. Uh, nobody even raises their voice. Nobody's doing it. You know, a few political leaders may be doing it. But people have just accepted that, yeah, this is what it is. So, uh, of course, we're not calling for any big uh, fight or anything. But, but people should be appalled by it. And people should ask for justice that what is going on. Uh, so, these are very important things. And why are we so weak? Because we're not, we're disconnected from our own shastras. It's very, very important that the moment we are connected with our shastras, we become empowered. Then you don't need anything else. Um, iron rod. An iron rod. How does iron get spoiled? You hit iron on anything. It doesn't, you can't do anything to iron. It's very strong. But when that same iron starts rusting, then it becomes very weak. The moment we are disconnected from our shastras, we start rusting. That is the problem. So we're all under rust right now. So this entire process is to, uh, you know, oiling and strengthening us uh, so, reading Bhagavad Gita is a very, very important aspect. So, you know, we should read it, we should understand it, and make it part of our um, um, part of our daily life. You know, uh, so that we don't become disturbed when people speak about Bhagavad Gita. They give us wrong information. Ah, got you. You know, immediately we can tell them you're wrong. So the next time we should know if anybody is giving you any kind of information, anyone, including me, you can ask them where is this mentioned. Otherwise, people will tell us fairy tale stories and we will be believe it. So, whoever is giving us any kind of gyan, ask them, where is this coming? Please give me some reference. Right? Where in Mahabharat? I would like to go and read that in Mahabharat. If it is mentioned in Mahabharat, great. If it is mentioned in Ramayana, great. And is it Valmiki's Ramayana? Is it Vyasadev's Mahabharata? That is very important. Correct? So this should be our fundamental principle. And this is actually the purpose also of why we are, you know, conducting this Bhagavad Gita class, that all of us become empowered uh, and we understand our own scriptures. And Bhagavad Gita is our foundation. And without this, you know, nothing will make sense. So uh, we have discussed these two uh, reasons of now. Arjuna is going to give more reasons, more complicated reasons to uh, Krishna of why he should not continue to uh, fight and Krishna, we will see in the future how wonderfully Krishna responds to all of this. And Arjuna, a great, great devotee, is in fact asking all these questions on our behalf. Arjuna is doing this for us because we don't have the opportunity to ask Krishna. So Arjuna very mercifully 5,000 years ago has asked all these questions on our behalf. Arjuna has no doubts actually. He is very clear in his mind. But he knew that we will have doubts. So he asked this in the middle of the battlefield. Uh, in the presence of the Acharya Hanumanji also. Hmm. Hanumanji, all of you know why Hanumanji is there? How Krishna made Hanumanji come there? So there was this episode of uh, Arjuna building. You heard that? So he asks why Ramachandra had need, needed monkeys to build this bridge from here to there, you know, to Lanka. Why so many stones and all that? I could have built a bridge with just arrows. Let's see, if I can do it, Ramachandra could also do it. Uh, if those Divyastras are there, Divyastras are not like ordinary arrows. So you leave Divyastras, they will create unlimited number of arrows and they can create a bridge out of that and they become unbreakable. So he said, I only can do it. And uh, if I can do it, Ramachandra also could have done it. Why? What is the need of these monkeys and all that? So Arjuna said that once. So he was standing there and there was a monkey somewhere in the corner. And that monkey said... Uh, no, because the bridge will break. Arjuna said, no, it will not break. So uh, he said, it will break. So Arjuna looked at him. He said, I can build a bridge. It will not break. So uh, he said, okay, build. So Arjuna made that bridge. And the monkey jumped on it. And the bridge broke. Uh, monkeys do that, no? You go to a branch, everything. They just keep shaking, shaking. So bridge broke. And Arjuna said, okay, I'll take this seriously. I will build a bridge now. Uh, and the monkey said, uh, if I break it next time, what, what about? If you break it, Arjuna said, I will commit suicide. Okay, I will kill myself. It's my Kshatriya promise. And um, if you are unable to break it, 
then you have to serve me. Okay. So monkey said, okay. So then uh, he built a bridge. Monkey broke it again. Again he built it. Monkey broke it again. Arjuna said, okay. Arjuna became very depressed at that time. And he said, okay, I have made a promise. I'm going to kill myself now. So he set up his fire and all that. At that time, a small boy comes. Brahmana boy. He comes, he says, hey, stop, stop. Both of you, stop. Why? What is wrong with you? Both of you. And uh, stop fighting. And immediately at that time, Arjuna looks at that Brahmana boy and he recognizes that it is Krishna. And the monkey looks at the Brahmana boy and he recognizes him as Lord Ramachandra. Because that monkey was no ordinary monkey. That was Hanumanji himself. Right? So, uh, uh, at that time, the Brahmana boy, Krishna and Arjuna, uh, sorry, uh, Krishna and Ramachandra, same personality, tells them, stop fighting. I don't like devotees fighting. Okay? No arguments and all that. But, so, he discourages that competition. He said, both of you are very great and uh, you all have your own purposes. But, um, Arjuna had built his final, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Arjuna had built the final bridge in the presence of Krishna at that time. And then the monkey jumps and the bridge doesn't break. Okay, the final time it doesn't break. So Arjuna actually, now he says, now I have won, you know, because after the presence of Krishna. So then Krishna makes Arjuna win. And now because he wanted to trick Hanumanji. So now Hanumanji, he tells him, now you have told him that you are going to serve him. So how are you going to serve him? So he says, when the time comes, you'll have to sit on his chariot and you'll have to uh, give a lot of guidance to him and give your strength and motivation at that time. So Hanumanji, if you read the Mahabharata also, Hanumanji was designated there to be silent and just motivate. But it is said that sometimes Hanumanji, from the top of the chariot, he would also shout. And when some giant elephants would come anywhere close to Arjuna, particularly coming from behind, uh, uh, Hanumanji used to roar. Nobody could see Hanumanji. He was in the form of a flag. But he used to roar so loudly. It is said that the elephants would get a heart attack. He was so powerful. So he didn't even have to fight. He was just sitting on the chariot and ah, he used to just shout. So anybody close that, they used to just get a heart attack and death. He was so powerful, Hanumanji. Imagine if he had jumped down to actually fight. Right? The war would have ended. No 18 days and 18 minutes. All done. So, uh, that's why Hanumanji was there. So, though Krishna told him, I hey, don't fight. Your job is to just sit there. But sometimes enthusiasm, huh? we can't uh, stop. So, he also wanted to serve. So, he would do that also. Anyway, so Mahabharata is very beautiful. And um, in the beauty, the great crown, golden crown of Mahabharata, there is this very beautiful gem, which is part of Mahabharata. And that is the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Hope to see you again some other time. Hare Krishna. श्रीमद् भगवत गीता की जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की